Hi, I'm Peter Birch, and welcome to my channel. Today, we're gonna to be talking about green tree snakes here in this beautiful Australian environment. Welcome to Critican. First of all, I wanna give a big shout out to my mate Heath for sending me this awesome catch bag or hoop bag. It's collapsible, which makes it nice and easy to carry in the car, and it's nice and light and very handy indeed for anyone that's relocating snakes. Check this out. This, my friends, is a marvelous, outstanding individual. It's a green tree snake, that's right. It's completely harmless. Now, it's one of very few Australian colubrids here in Australia. Now, this colubrid here is completely non-venomous, non-toxic, easy to handle. And you can see he's got a little bit of a, a throat puff there. That's his way of intimidating us. That's right. He's trying to make us feel a little bit scared. Now, these beautiful creatures love areas just like this. They inhabit areas all the way from New South Wales up through Queensland, all the way up to the Cape York, even across into Papua New Guinea, and even all the way back over to Darwin. Now, obviously, the colours can be varied. They can be yellow, they can be orange, they can be black, they can be bright blue, but typically they're green just like this beautiful fella right here. You can see he's very, very alert. Now the reason why he's very alert is he's got those big round eyes. He's diurnal, which means he hunts during the day and sleeps at night like most things, but this guy likes to eat fast moving prey. Now he'll eat things like lizards and frogs. In fact, he's a lizard and frog specialist with no venom, no way of constricting. Basically, he's got to catch those animals, eat them and eat them alive. Very macabre, I must admit. Now they'll also eat other things like fish, tadpoles, small eels. So these guys really like areas where there's a lot of moisture, just like this beautiful rainforest here, and they can inhabit areas of open woodlands as well. Now, as you can see, he looks like he's a little bit beaten up. He's got a few lumps and bumps all over him. The reason why is because he does eat frogs and lizards, which are usually filled with a lot of parasites. Now those parasites obviously build up in the stomach, and then they start to burrow their way through the stomach wall, and then they get stuck behind the skin layer, and they almost look like a little pimple-like sort of shape. Now you can actually lance that and squeeze it and pull out the worm, but we're not doing that today. That's not up to us. That's up to a vet to do. Now this guy found his way into someone's backyard where the dogs bailed him up. Now we just removed him from that situation, and we're giving him a second chance of life. Gonna let him go out here today back into his beautiful mother nature. Now these guys are an egg laying species. They can lay anywhere from three to 12 nice elongated eggs. Now believe it or not, in the hobby, they're very, very popular. Everyone likes these things in the hobby, but it can be quite difficult to get onto pinky mice. So they do have their little bit of opportunities where they become a little bit more difficult than most. As you can see, he's quite alert. How does a snake that has no venom defend itself? Well, basically this is it. He's very, very quick. And when he gets going, he's super quick. The second thing he uses, and I don't know if you guys can see it right now, or even smell it more importantly, is he has has this amazing odor that he releases from his buttocks. And um, it's it's quite pungent, I must admit. Now, the third thing they do is that they're quite willing to bite usually. So it's it's unusual that this guy's not willing to bite at the moment. So they're usually quite easy. They just sort of lash out and bite and chew all over you because, you know, that's the only way of getting away or letting you know that they don't feel comfortable. Now, obviously areas where the cane toads exist in the Queensland, these guys are obviously being hit very, very hard by that population. Now, obviously they're feeding on the cane toads. The cane toads are full of poison or toxins. Those toxins are quite strong and pungent and they kill these beautiful snakes very quickly. That is a very unfortunate thing indeed. Now they do have really good populations, so they're not endangered, they're not critical, or they're not at threat at all. So these guys have got a great population. And when we put him into the trees, you're gonna see why they call him a tree snake. You know, he's very quick and fast to move through the trees. Now they do live with these high parasite loads and it doesn't really cause them any issues. I mean, there's a little tick just there. If anything, I'd be pulling the ticks off and getting rid of those because obviously, you know, they have gotta fill their need before they can go away. But look at this beautiful snake. Now when he is threatened he'll actually open his scales up just like this and I'll show you and you'll see this beautiful blue colors underneath. Look at those blue flashes. So he'll exhibit these big blue flashes which basically means he feels a little bit threatened and believe it or not he's actually quite calm because he usually puffs his throat up. Those colors would all be popping out all over the place but at the moment he's just stinking us up right now. Stinking us up. He just wants to get away. I don't know about you guys but I think I've had about enough of this beautiful smell and I think he's had enough of me. So until next time guys I hope you enjoyed the green tree snake here in Australia one of the very few colubrids we have, and it's a non-toxic, non-dangerous, non-venomous animal. One of the very few we have in Australia, believe it or not. I hope you guys enjoyed that, and hopefully you enjoy the scenery around me. Until next time, guys, thanks so much for watching Critter Camp. Get out and enjoy nature.